one of the first applications in two-dimensional kinematics is about the projectile motion which is the problem of predicting the motion of a particle or object when it is launched into the air so when it's launched into the air anything around the earth will obviously experience an attraction towards the ground this is the gravitational acceleration so uh, as Galileo has shown through his experiments and everyone else after that every object falls towards the earth under the same acceleration 9.8 meters per second so every object will be attracted towards the ground so when you throw something or something is being launched or fired eventually it will fall down towards the earth so given this type of situations, can we predict the motion of the particle and any particle that is being launched or thrown or released in the air? So what we want to do is to derive an equation to model this motion and the, what we want to get is the projectile equation. When we talk about projectile motion, the problem that we want to solve usually is this. Suppose that we have a particle that is launched at an initial angle of theta and an initial velocity or speed at v0. And we set up our coordinate system such that the starting point of our projectile is at the origin and the horizontal and vertical directions as usual are x and y. So given this initial condition, can we predict the future behavior of this particle? So the assumptions that we make for this projectile motion is this. The acceleration of the particle only occurs in the vertical direction. So therefore, the acceleration is Ay in the vertical direction is towards the ground, which we call the symbol G. G is the acceleration due to gravity. As we all know, any, everything on earth will fall towards the ground and the acceleration is 9.80 meters per second square so the particle only has vertical acceleration as for the horizontal acceleration we assume it to be zero if there is no air resistance so the projectile motion that we are considering here is either having no or negligible air resistance therefore there will be no horizontal acceleration all the acceleration only occurs in the vertical direction and with this initial condition we can say that the initial velocity is can be written down in vector form which is v initially is having a horizontal and vertical component so the horizontal component is of course uh, in the horizontal direction is v cos theta and in the vertical component of the velocity is v sine theta therefore in vector form we can write this v cosine theta in the i direction and vertically is v sine theta so vx and vy uh, we will call this v0x and we will call this v0y both of them representing initial velocities of course the velocities will change throughout the motion so to analyze the projectile motion we split into the horizontal and vertical components as mentioned previously we can analyze them separately so for the horizontal motion it is the motion where we have zero acceleration so we can begin with a kinematic equation saying that vxt plus half a x t square so this is the kinematic equation for displacement in the horizontal direction and as we all know and we have just mentioned acceleration in the x direction is zero and the initial horizontal velocity is v cos theta so we have this equation v cos theta times t and we can express t in terms of x and v which is v cos theta so this is our uh, first equation coming from analyzing the horizontal motion so going on to the vertical direction we can analyze the vertical motion for the vertical motion we have acceleration which is acceleration in the 9.8 meters per second square and the equation for displacement in the y direction is this this is just the general formula and we will substitute in our values now so our initial horizontal 
velocity is v sine theta and our acceleration is negative g negative because it's towards the ground t square and this is our equation for our equation for the displacement in the vertical direction so this is our second equation and I, I want to derive an equation to represent the motion or the path of the projectile so what we want to do is to take t which we have found earlier and substitute into here and here which is essentially saying substitute equation 1 into 2 so if we put this inside what we have here is v sine theta and after substituting t we get v cos theta and then this is half g and substituting t square so we square everybody v square cos square theta so uh, once we substitute we can do a bit of simplification v, v0 and v0 cancels sine over cos is a tangent so this is a tangent theta times x and over here nothing much happens so we just write everything out and multiply it by x square so this is what we call our projectile equation and this is one of the most uh, one of the first important equation that we will be learning throughout this chapter on mechanics So now that we have derived the projectile equation, what is it actually about and how do we actually use it and how does it actually describe projectiles or the motion of particles flying through the air. So first of all, the first thing that we note about this equation is that this is a quadratic equation in x. This is a function of y in terms of x and the coefficients here and here are constants that depends on the initial condition of the projectile so we can actually plot the motion of the projectile in the x and y Cartesian axis as usual we usually try to set the starting point of the motion as the origin so the initial condition of the projectile as we have mentioned earlier is v0 initial speed at the angle theta with respect to the horizontal so if we have this quadratic equation take note that this is actually an equation that looks like a constant x minus constant x squared so this is a quadratic equation with a negative coefficient for x squared so this is a quadratic graph that has two roots and it will decrease over time if for large x and eventually going to the negative region so this is a quadratic equation y x minus constant x squared so if we can understand this to be a quadratic equation we can treat this problem like a quadratic problem in maths so if you launch a projectile with the initial velocity v at initial angle the particle will be taking this trajectory and the motion is traced out across this line as we all know in everyday life when we throw something that is obvious so from here we can extract a lot of quantities and make uh, all kinds of predictions for example if we throw an object with this speed and angle can we predict how far in front of you will it land towards the ground so that is very simple if we know that this is a quadratic curve so hitting the ground means the particle will reach the point where y equals to zero again so we can calculate this distance from here to here as the value of the coordinate x which is basically the root of the quadratic equation so we can solve this point and we and the quantity that we want to extract here is will be called the range of the projectile motion and uh, more specifically this is the horizontal range so in order to calculate the horizontal range we will set the point where y is equals to zero so for the projectile 
equation uh, it is it should satisfy this equation g over 2v square cos square theta and x square and I want to find the value of x where this becomes 0 again so we will try to solve this equation so this is very straightforward uh, we bring one term to the left so g over 2v square cos square theta x square and uh, we will restore tangent as sine over cos and x so one of the x's here can be cancelled because the this x will just give you the zero root and I want to find the other root over here so we will try to find it that's pretty straightforward uh, a, a few cancellations can happen we see that the cosine square and the cos will cancel over here and I will bring everything over to the other side and we make x the subject so from here we have v square over g cos theta and sine theta and uh, don't forget the 2 so there's a 2 over here and from here we can uh, this is a formula for x but before we say before we finish we shall simplify this using a trigger formula so uh, using a trigonometric identity 2 sine cos is basically equals to sine of 2 theta so from here we can get the horizontal range for the motion which is basically v squared over g sine 2 theta and this is what we will call the horizontal range formula so the horizontal range formula as expected depends on the speed and the acceleration of gravity of course and of course the angle so for a given initial angle and initial speed we can predict how far in front of you will the projectile land how far in front of the starting point and from here we can also get a maximum range because our range depends on the angle and if we increase the angle the range will increase accordingly until there's a maximum point where the range will decrease again so from uh, what we we can predict the maximum horizontal range is where this value is as high as possible so how can we get this value as high as possible is to look at the angle theta so we are assuming that our initial velocity is fixed we are having some value so if we change the angle we can change the distance the final distance so what angle will give you the maximum distance so if we look at this the highest possible number for a sine function is 1 so in order to get this to be 1 2 theta must be 90 degrees in other words theta is 45 degrees so this gives me the maximum horizontal range sine of 45 is 1 so uh, this is equal to v square over g sine of 2 times 45 which is 90 sine of 90 is 1 which is v square over g so this gives me my maximum horizontal range